So, we want to show you how to get in touch with your emotions. We don't want you to be afraid of your emotions. We don't want you to dislike your negative emotion. We want you to think of all of your emotions as your friend because they are. We also think it would be very helpful if you would decide today or tomorrow or sometime soon or sometime that you are not going to compare your desires with other people, your emotions with other people. In other words, let's for just a little while leave everybody else out of the equation because the only thing that is important in the achieving of anything that you desire and in the fulfilling of your reason for being here is that you come into alignment with you. All you've got to do is want something and not think thoughts that are opposite of it and that thing that you want must be. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about any of that because they can't vibrate for you. Oh, you can pay attention to what they think and as you pay attention to what they think, something is activated within you and that really is what power of influence is. But you don't have to be influenced in a negative way. You can look around this world and find vibrational alignment with things that are a vibrational match to you. Years ago, Jerry wrote a paper called Keep Your Ideas to Yourself Until They Are Fully Developed. And the reason that he wrote the paper is because he saw so many people that he was counseling toward achieving one thing or another who would be well on their way to achieving it when they would talk to someone who had a different idea about it. Jerry would meet people that he knew nothing about their past and he would hold a vision of them in his mind of their success. He would say, what is it that you want? He would get them to express with clarity what it was that they wanted and then he would say, I will show you the path to achieving what you want. And he would monitor them day by day and he would see them moving towards success with evidence all around them pointing to the success that they were receiving. And then they would go home and talk to somebody who remembered who they used to be. And that person would remind them who they used to be with such fervor that it would activate within that person the memory of who they used to be. And now they were out of vibrational alignment with who they now wanted to be. So Jerry wrote a paper and gathered many statistics about it that said, keep your ideas to yourself until they are fully developed because he knew that if he could hold a person's focus upon the belief of their success long enough, that they would achieve vibrational alignment with their new idea and that in achieving vibrational alignment with their new idea, their new idea must manifest and that if they could gather enough momentum that in time, nothing that anybody else said would make any difference because now that person could say, to the people who were remembering who they used to be. No, no, no. I used to be that. Now I am this. You don't know me anymore. I have become something more. But if they got to them too soon, they would remember themselves who they used to be and then the party was over. So, today we're talking to you about the art of allowing. And we are going way, 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 way back. In other words, you might be remembering the failure of your childhood or the failure of a relationship or the failure of a financial situation. But we are remembering who you really are. We're wanting to activate within you that vibrational, visceral, emotional, spiritual, soul memory of the fantastic creator of the worthy being that you are and we don't want anything that has happened along your physical trail to have become so much more meaningful than who you really are that you revert to your failure vibration to your unworthy vibration we want to help you restore yourself to your invincible worthy beloved creative genius vibration that's what the art of allowing is the art of allowing says you get to choose it, but you got to vibrate in vibrational alignment with what you have chosen. We have not come to dissuade you from anything you want because you are not choosing inappropriately no matter which side of which battle you are upon. There is not a giant right and wrong in the sky. You have not come forth to set everybody straight, to make the world understand your one way of thinking because one way of thinking is the only wrong way of thinking that there is. 
This is a universe of diversity and diversity means plenty to go around and source energy will answer everyone. And it is only in your shortage consciousness where you believe that there is an finite amount of resources that you are squabbling over whether it is land or whether it is oil or whether it is the right attitude or whether it is the right religion when you think that what you've got is the only place that it exists and you are fighting over it then there is plenty of resistance to go around the resources that you're reaching for are infinite and your ability to achieve a desire for something means that the universe has the ability to deliver it to you with no exceptions and so if just for a few days you will say, I am no longer in competition with anyone. And more importantly, I no longer give a rip what anybody else thinks about anything. I'm going to spend my time for just a little while showing myself my vibrational alignment with my own source. I'm going to start guiding my life from the inside out. Now you're on the track that you were born to be on. Now you are fulfilling your reason for being. And oh yes, what was that again? Your reason for being? Joy. Joy, you say. Oh, surely there's more than that. Surely there is something more meaningful than joy. Actually, no. When you reach for joy, you line up with source. And when you line up with source, you are an extension of source energy. And when you are an extension of source energy, everywhere you put your thought expands this universe in a lovely way. When you line up with growth and get out of sync with joy, now you don't know which end is up. Now you find yourself doing things because you should do them, not because you want to do them. And now your vibration is all out of whack. And then everything gets hard. And then you get really tired. And then you say, what's the use? And we say... Well, you got off track. You forgot what your dominant intention was. Your dominant intention is to line up with who you really are. Have you watched the little ones? They line up. Jerry and Esther and Tracy and Kate, Kate is two and a half, had an afternoon together, and Kate has not forgotten what her purpose of life is. She just looked everywhere for something to feel joyful about. She pointed out, a hundred birds that none of the others would have noticed if she hadn't pointed them out. She pointed out fish that the others may not have noticed if she hadn't pointed them out. A fly landed on her nose, and she took such delight in it, she laughed for two or three minutes. Because in the same moment that the fly landed on her nose, she was noticing that a bird was flying by. And the humor of the fly word and the fly word <laughs> just knocked her out. How funny that is, that in the moment I would be saying, bird fly by, a fly would land on my nose. And as Jerry and Esther and Tracy, for a few hours, approached life through Kate's eyes, they remembered it's all about joy. It's not about achieving something. You can't help that. It's not about learning something. You can't help that. It's only about joy. That's the purpose of this life experience. It's for joy. It's for joy. It's for joy. So... Here, right now, you might not be feeling all that joyful, which means we've got to be irritating the life out of you. <laughs> Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. And if you can't get a whiff of bliss, then you don't even want to play the game. And we want to say to you, it is for joy, but there may be, depending upon what's been happening to you, there may be some vibrational variations between the joy that we are encouraging and where you are right now. And that's okay. Your goal is joy, but don't be upset if you can't quantum leap from despair to joy. No one can. Don't ask yourself to do impossible things. Instead say, I think I will go as far as I can go, and right now, anger feels pretty darn good to me. And what we want to say to you is, 
If you've chosen this angry thought because it is an improvement over the despair that you were feeling before, then good for you. And we would give you as big of monument or statue or plaque in recognition of your accomplishment as you made your way all the way to rage or revenge as we would if you got into the upper registries of ecstasy. Because any movement up the emotional scale is worth commending yourself about. If you came to us and you were just frustrated or overwhelmed about something, we would not encourage you into conversation that makes you angry because that would be going the wrong way on the emotional scale. We would encourage you from your place of frustration to reach for more thoughts of hopefulness or thoughts of optimism. Maybe even a little pessimism is a step up from that feeling of overwhelmment that you are feeling. The important thing is that you decide that you're going to take control of the way you feel. And most of you have not really yet understood that or decided to do that. Most of you are still saying, give me a better condition and then I will observe it and I'll feel better when I see it. And we say, good luck on that one because you can't get there from there. You can't get to a better condition from a place of vibrating with a worse condition. The law of attraction is not going to bring it to you. Jerry and Esther were driving yesterday and they have some things that are happening with their motor coach. Minor things like they can't get out the door. <laughs> when they put the coach in gear, it puts pins down that airlock the door shut. And then when they put the parking brake in, then it releases those and so they can exit the coach. But for some reason that mechanism is slow. So they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to get out the door and there is an emergency hatch but it's very uncomfortable <laughs> Jerry said I don't even think we can climb out this window and look how far down it is and so they have gathered a list of things that they are wanting to have fixed on their coach and they will take it to Decatur tomorrow but Decatur was not expecting them because it just happened. And the first appointment that they could get is the end of October. Well, they will not be in the area the end of October. And so when Esther called to talk to a man, he was very nonchalant. He said to them, sure, you're free to drop in. And Esther said, uh, do you think anyone will have time to see us? And he said, I have no way of knowing that. <laughs> And Esther said, well, it is quite a distance for us to drive over there. Can you give me your best guesstimate? And he said, I really shouldn't do that. And Esther said, well, if you were standing in my physical shoes, would you make this effort? And he said, you're welcome to drop in any time. <laughs> and Esther hung up the telephone and she looked at Jerry and they both said, he does not really care. <laughs> he has no sense of concern at all <laughs> and then they began sort of beating the drum of that and as they made their list of things that need to be repaired they pointed out to one another none of these things should even be on this list this should be a better manufactured job this should not be happening and before they knew it in about 10 minutes they were both in a place that we would call frustration serious frustration bordering on resentment not bordering it was well into resentment <laughs> and just tiptoeing into the range of revenge <laughs> as Esther was picturing the big sign she was going to put on her coach don't buy one from them <laughs> actually it had not gone that far this time when Esther realized that her vibrational attitude and what she emits now in the next few days will dictate whether there is a slot for her or not when they get over there on Monday morning. In other words, everything about that future experience depends on how she feels now. Ooh, Ooh. something to think about. <laughs> so now she has motivation to feel good. Now, here's the thing that we want to talk to you about. You all, even Esther, often will use the motivation to feel good when we want feeling good to be the motivation. We want it to matter so much to you that you feel good. We don't want you to just practice feeling good so you can get stuff. 
And that's why you want to get the stuff anyway, isn't it? Don't you want to get the stuff so that you can feel good? So why not feel good whether you get the stuff or not? So then Esther began talking out loud and she said to Jerry, you know, these people must have an endless stream of people that pass through their shop with situations just like this. It must be very hard for them to have personal care about every single one of them. They must have to sort of get into that nonchalant place just to be able to enjoy their work at all.